Well, one bit of evidence about caregivers is that there is a structure at the end of our DNA, our chromosomes. Chromosomes is the strands where our DNA is located in our, in the, in our cells, in the nucleus of our cells. And these strands of chromosomes have at the end a structure called a telomere. A telomere is like the glue at the end of my shoelace to keep the strands from fraying, to keep it together. When we're born, our telomeres are a certain length. And as we get older, gradually, gradually, they shorten as we age. And until the, at the end of the, uh, our life, they become unraveled, at which point so do we. Now, they looked at the, t but it's a mark of aging, in other words. Now, they looked at the telomeres of, the, of mothers looking after chronically ill children. And they found that these women in their 30s and their 40s, their telomeres were 10 years shorter than their chronological, chronological age would have predicted. In other words, the chronic stress of caregiving aged them by 10 years. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that we shouldn't care for children or for other people that require our support. But it does mean that how we give care and what kind of support we get makes a huge difference to our health. So the first um, clipping here is by a woman who's, who writes the article herself. These are all from the Globe and Mail. And uh, she's diagnosed with breast cancer. Her name is Donna. So she's diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, her doctor's name is Harold. His, her husband's name is Hi. And, she, and Donna is the second wife. The first wife died of breast cancer. Now Donna, the second wife, is diagnosed with it. And so Donna writes, Harold tells me that the lump is small and most assuredly not in my lymph nodes. Unlike that of High's first wife, whose cancers had spread everywhere by the time they found it. You're not gonna die, he reassures me. But I'm worried about High, I say. I won't have the strength to support him. And what do you notice? Her first and automatic thought is, how can I support my husband emotionally as I'm dealing with a potentially fatal illness? So this compulsive and automatic concern for the needs of others while ignoring your own is a major risk factor for chronic illness. The other clippings I will read you are obituaries, all from the Globe and Mail. Sidney and his mother had an incredibly special relationship a bond that was apparent in all aspects of their lives until her death. As a married man with young children, Sidney made a point to have dinner with his parents every day as his wife Rosalind and their four kids waited for him at home. Sidney would walk in, greeted by yet another dinner to eat and to enjoy. Never wanting to disappoint either woman in his life, Sidney kept eating two dinners a day for years until gradual weight gain began to raise suspicions. Okay? So that this poor man suffered under the belief that number one, um, he was responsible how everybody else felt, and number two, he must never disappoint anybody. So he actually couldn't say to his mother, you know, mom, I got amazing news. I got four kids. And, some, and, and, and I'm going to have dinner with them most of the time. Nor could he say to his wife, you know, Rosalind, I, I'm very close with my mom. She needs my support. So once or twice a week, I'm going to have dinner with her. He just tried to please everybody all the time. And this need to please everybody all the time, it'll kill you. Fundamentally, what happens is one way or the other. If you don't know how to say no when you need to, your body will say it for you in the form of illness. So chronic illness represents the body saying no when you didn't do it. Not your fault. This is how you were programmed before you had any choice in the matter. So again, it's not a question of blame or self-blame. But it does mean that to prevent illness, or if you have an illness, to deal with it more effectively, you need to learn to assert who you are and to say no. Now that might be difficult sometimes because the people in your life have got used to you as a yes. They've always heard you say yes. 
some of them might not like you very much if you start saying no all of a sudden. And what you're going to do when you start saying no is you're going to find out who your friends are. Because the real ones are going to say to you, hey, oh, so I'm so glad you're finally saying no. And the ones that were simply there because you were constantly available for them are going to, oh, what happened to her or him? That's it. But so it, it, it'll create some conflict, which, which will <laughs> trigger all your fears about attachment. So you're going to have to learn that, you're, that you are more important than your attachments. That wasn't true when you were a kid, but it's true as an adult. It is important to realize that you have to take care of yourself because you can't take care of anybody else until you do. Well, the trouble is you can, but if you don't take care of yourself in the process, you're going to make yourself ill. So the issue, of course, is not that we shouldn't provide care to other people. I mean, caring for others and being kind, that's wired into us as human beings. That's the true expression of who we are. But going along with that, there's to be self-care. That means that you must demand support. If you're caring for others, you must demand support <clears throat> when you need it. You must be able to have a break. You must be able to ask for help when you need it. Uh, you must be able to express how you feel. You must take time for yourself. There must be times in your life which is just for you. So that we have to find ways amidst the role of caregivers to actually uh, care for the person here. Because if we don't, the result is burnout and illness. So again, it's not a question of being selfish and unconcerned. That's not so good either for your health. Um, but it's a question of being as kind to yourself as uh, you are wanting to be to others. Uh, it's kind of the golden rule turned around, you know. Uh, do unto you, do unto, not just do unto others what you would have them do to you, but also do unto yourself what you wish to do to others. <laughs>